X Laser Lab reached out to me to see if I wanted to test out their new laser, the X Laser Lab X1 Pro. It's a six in one machine. Be warned, mistakes have been made during the filming of this review. Currently it goes for $34.99, but there's also a discount code down below in the description to save yourself an additional 5%. Yes, a little shameless plug. Now let's go over some of the features of this machine. You can weld. It uses a 700 watt fiber laser to create precise and clean welds. It can cut. Yeah, it can slice through materials like stainless steel and carbon steel up to 3 millimeters. It can do cleaning and rust removal. It uses the laser to strip rust, paint, and contaminants. It has an intuitive 7 inch color touchscreen display. It can support an external wire feeder. It has a high welding speed of up to 120 millimeters per second. It weighs about 42 pounds, which makes it one of the lightest laser welders on the market. It supports various metals like stainless steel, carbon steel, aluminum, and copper, and it has an air cooling system that helps ensure stable performance and extends the lifespan. And of course, links to purchase will be down below with the discount code. Setup is very easy because everything is keyed. You can only go in one spot, so don't force it. And right now I'm actually attaching the ground source here, but it literally only took me about five minutes to set up everything. Very simple. Now, when you purchase a welder or anything like this, you're going to have consumables. And I didn't have what's called a nitrogen tank, but I needed to source one. And I went to my local welding supply place to pick up one. And let's just say, due to their union contract, they were not able to assist me to load it into my vehicle. I loaded it within a couple seconds. And I said, don't worry, I have to actually unload it too by myself. And that's how I unloaded it. And let's just say it wasn't cheap. And you also have to buy other things like welding wire and a regulator. I actually wound up getting a different regulator. And I would also suggest a air compressor with a water and oil separator. I actually use this for um, some of my tools, especially my plasma cutter. And I use the orange line side for that. And you want to make sure that you could have a compressor that could go over 100 PSI. And then you're going to need to get some other fittings to adapt to this six millimeter hose that goes to the back of your um, laser welder cutter. And as I mentioned, I went with a different regulator. Um, it has a uh, flow meter on it, and I have two reducers to reduce the, the line with a quick release. So, yep, you'll need to do this as well. We'll cover some of the expenses at the end of the video. Now let's get to testing. We're going to do some cutting, and you want to make sure that you do it on an angle. And um, we're going to check the monitoring system, make sure that the pressure is good here. And we're going to hit back and we're going to make sure the gas is on and check our compressor. And now we're going to start cutting. This is only about one millimeter thick and it cuts like butter. I mean, not that much slag. I mean, you really wouldn't expect to see much slag anyways for something this thin, but now we're going to go with something a little bit thicker, 1.7 millimeters, and you're going to definitely want to slow it down a little bit because you're going to be cutting through some thicker material. This was actually a test piece from my CNC machine. I forgot to ground it uh, when I did it, so kind of ruined it, but you can see how much cleaner it is, and I'm actually running the um, air compressor through this. So the slag is going to be a little bit more uh, compared to if I did the nitrogen. One thing you'll notice, I put a whole bunch of uh, metal underneath and that's because the laser is going right through it and you can see all the marks on the metal. And again, just I'm just having some fun here. I'm just cutting apart this metal like butter. It's pretty darn amazing. But you will see that in the lower right, you can see it actually scorching the metal on the ground. So you're going to want to have something to protect the concrete. And uh, I'll go through that a little bit later in the video. But a lot of people, what they'll use, they'll use like um, a box of sand underneath or rocks to absorb it. Now I doubled up on this. This is going to be over three millimeters thick. And it says that it could do three millimeters. And I didn't have three millimeter stock, so I just doubled up the material. And you can see how slow I'm going. I did want to try to use a straight edge, but it didn't work out for me. So I just did it freehand for this one. And you always want to make sure that you're properly grounded on the material. 
And uh, let's go ahead and give a little bit of assist there to break off. And there you go. Look at that. Let's go ahead and measure how thick it is. And we are just over three millimeters. We're at three, three, three. And it said that it would do three millimeters. Let's just say I had a little bit of fun. I really didn't know when to stop, but yeah, <laughs> it was definitely fun to use. Now you notice that uh, when you are trying to adjust the gas, uh, whether it be on your nitrogen or your air compressor, that if you are blocking it, you're not going to see the, the flow. So you want to make sure you turn on the gas on your X laser labs, and then you'll see your flow. So I'm doing about 50 PSI because I'm going to start welding. And since we're going to be welding, I'm using the Harbor Freight Vulcan 0 0.030 wire. And I should have just like tried to push it through instead of uh, holding down this button forever to feed the wire through. Now let's go to welding. And you will see here that we're going to click on the upper right and you can select your material. So I'm going to go with uh, steel here and two millimeters. I believe that's steel. And you can choose continuous or pulse. And then you have your gas in the middle and then you have your wire feed on off. And we could go to wire feed configuration if you so choose and adjust it. But it's sort of set for what it is. Go to settings and check our little atmospheric pressure. Make sure everything is on for our gases. Now this is literally my first test. I am so surprised. I haven't welded in over 20 years and definitely never had a weld that looked that nice before. Now I wanted to uh, show the strength of it and I thought I was recording, but I, it didn't. Uh, my fault, but you can see how strong that weld is. I literally bent the garbage out of this thing and it did not break that weld at all. And that was only on one side. Pretty nice. Now I am basically just practicing here. I have some other pieces of metal here that I was just messing around with and seeing if I could fill in some of the gaps because it definitely was not flush. You can see it on the lower left that I kind of uh, went a little bit too fast on that one because there was a little bit of a hole there. And now I'm just doing this uh, thinner piece onto some thicker metal and let's see how well this penetrates to the other side. Very nice clean weld here. And then if we flip it over, you'll see that on the other side, it definitely penetrated all the way through. But this is, again, just over one millimeter thick. But yeah, you don't have anything to worry about here. And you can always just weld both sides if you want. And now here I just wanted to do a like a butt joint here, if that's what you call it. I'm sure I'll be corrected down in the comments. But just welding two pieces together laying flat. And this is definitely when um, mistakes were made so to speak. Gives a whole new meaning to welding cart. Because that's what it is. It's a welding cart. And um, isn't this what it's supposed to do? You just weld things on it. Yeah. Total rookie move on my part. Should have had something underneath, but you wanted to see how strong the weld is. Now I, again, I was doing I guess a seam weld, if you want to call it that. And um, yeah, um, it went all the way through. And it went through big time. I really thought I was going to use a pair of needle noses and it was going to come off. Nope. Um, so I'm just grabbing the whole piece of metal here and I'm just rocking it back and forth. And you can see that um, it's not wanting to budge at all. So... Let's start really working this. So I started to twist it, and you can see that I'm actually ripping the metal and not the weld. So hopefully this gives you an understanding on how strong this weld is. So let's go ahead and break it off, and now let's see if I could actually get this uh, little piece of uh, metal off my welding cart. Wow. That definitely is twisted and a mangled mess, but that weld looks pretty darn nice, though. Now let's get this thing off. Now I really expected it to pop off with just like prying it up with a flathead screwdriver. No such luck. So let's go ahead and use a hammer.
And finally, it's free. Wow, I was not expecting that. Yep, looks great. Let's continue on. Now let's uh, weld two pieces of aluminum together. This is actually a slat wall. You can see some uh, fiber laser testing grids on there on the left. So this is again my scrap pile. And uh, I'm going to do um, a pause here because uh, I'm going to have to remove my magnet for my welding table here. And uh, we're going to continue on because I want to see how close I could get to my previous weld. think that I'm on the money there. Nope, a little bit of a little gap there. But this is the first time I ever tried welding aluminum. And uh, I have to say, I'm pretty darn impressed with that weld, especially for the first time. Filled in the gap really nicely. I could have done a better job of uh, lining up the pieces. And then on the back there, it's just soot and it just easily comes right off. So if you want to do aluminum, that's pretty darn easy now. So uh, let's continue on to uh, another feature, shall we? Now be warned, this could be addictive and fun. It's the cleaning mode. And basically it's just, you hook up your air compressor, do it around 70 or 80 PSI, and this is the bumper of our RV. Yeah, it's seen better days. When you live in um, the rust belt, yeah, this is what to expect. Now you're gonna wanna make sure that your ground clamp is actually on your laser wand itself because you're not gonna be touching the laser wand to the material. And you're going to always want to wear proper PPE, safety goggles. And I'm really not getting any sparks or anything flying up and hitting my skin. But you want to make sure that anyone that's around you is properly protected as well. And you can see that there's sometimes lines here. And you're going to want to try to find your focal height. And you can see that I'm getting better with how fast I'm going. And I'm not digging into the material. Because if you're not careful, if you're too close... And if you're too slow, you're going to start really etching into the metal. And as you can see, I got a pretty good rhythm going on here. And this is real time. The rest of the videos of this will be sped up by 5x. So again, this gets addictive and fun. Now, let me try to explain this best I can. This is a sort of a white bumper. It maybe used to be white. And a 1064 nanometer laser won't really actually engrave white because it's highly reflective. But this is, like, like I said, off-white. And it actually has some rust on it. And that's why you can see some of it actually being engraved off. And um, so if you have a white surface and you're wondering why it's not uh, doing anything, that is why. Technically, I could go over this a little bit, as you saw. And uh, it will eat it away because it's an off-white or it has lots of surface contaminants. So after about 10 minutes, this is what the bumper looks like. Yep, I'm gonna have to do a lot more prep work to get this looking really good. Now, let's go over some of my final thoughts about the X Laser Lab X1 Pro. Well, the laser performed as advertised, and that's all that I can expect. And that's all I would want during a review. I didn't have any hiccups along the way. The machine did what it was supposed to do, and it actually exceeded my expectations, which is only a good thing. I found once I got started and I had the settings dialed in, it was very easy to use. You also get a decent amount of consumables. You know, you got these protective lenses, you got some uh, tips here, and you also get some focusing lenses. So yeah, you definitely have some things to get you going for a long time. And you get a variety of nozzle tips, anything from cutting to cleaning to welding. So you definitely have a different variety of tips to get you going and get you through almost any project. When it comes to documentation, it is not that great. I mean, I would expect it to be a small novel and not just a few pages that just really doesn't tell you much of anything. How about give some PSI settings for materials and stuff? I mean, yeah, it is pretty lackluster. Now I do lots of reviews on lasers, so I have an understanding of it. And I have a plasma cutter and I have a welder, but none of that really is applicable to this because it's a totally different animal. So I was on a quest for knowledge and how to actually use this. And I stumbled across their YouTube channel and lo and behold, they had a lot of shorts here from focusing to how to set up 
your wire feeding and what the nozzle tips are. So I'll suggest that you go to their YouTube channel because it really goes over a lot and pretty quickly. And especially maintenance. Like here, they're doing a video on how to clean your lenses, replace them, and because you're going to be wanting to do that pretty often. Just make sure that there's no particulates in them because it can actually blow back into the nozzle tip. Now that also leads to what you need and consumables. Now I already had this air compressor and the water and oil separator for my uh, plasma cutter. And that's about a $500 investment right there. And my nitrogen tank costs $425. But the refills are only around $35 to $40. Then between all the other fittings and everything that I had to get, including the regulator, we're looking at another $150. Now I did run the compressed air for the cutting as well as the cleaning. And that's why I had some more slag on my cuts. And that was just to help conserve the nitrogen. It's not like I don't want to fill up the tank. It's just me lugging that around is not ideal. And I would just like to conserve it for more real projects. Oh, and I also had to get an adapter for my plug because I didn't have one that was compatible for this. And then there's the laser itself. Yes, you definitely want to make sure that you protect the floor and any surrounding areas because uh, the laser shoots through and yeah, it could damage your floor. And an easy solution for that is to just put down like a protective layer of pebbles or something to help absorb the laser. But overall, I am very satisfied with the performance of this machine. So if you're looking to purchase one, links will be down below. And of course, there will be a special coupon for 5% off. So I really, truly appreciate you tuning in to Tripod's Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you again on Tripod's Garage.